Uh, good afternoon, class. Today, we will talk about ethics and accountability in the government service. Now, a public office is both a duty and a position of great importance in a government bureaucracy. So, it is a right, an authority, and a duty created and conferred by law or fixed by law for a certain period of time or enduring and the pleasure of the appointing power. Now, an individual in public office is invested with some portion of the sovereign functions of the government to be exercised for the benefit of the public. Okay, so Section 1 of Article 11 of the Philippine Constitution, uh, or Constitution of the F Republic of the Philippines, um, provides that um, a public office is a public trust. Public officers and employees must at all times be accountable to the people, serve them with utmost responsibility, integrity, and loyalty, and efficiency, act with patriotism and justice, and lead modest lives. Okay, so since trust is an obligation imposed on individual with confidence and authority. It must be performed with the highest degree of dedication, integrity, and excellence. Now, in a democratic country like the Philippines, the authority of public officer, officers is derived from the consent of the governed. So, kinsa man ang mga governed kita, people, no? Public officers are vested with power and authority to command the performance of their subordinates and to commit the resources of their organizations in the highest interest of the people. So, the citizens' demand for better public service has enlarged the responsibility of public officials. They are required to provide a better quality of life for people. Um, in assuming public uh, responsibility, they are mainly governed by the values and ethics of public administration and by their individual morality. So, when we talk of val values and ethics, no, these are essentially personalistic, but they also guide and influence human behavior in a certain organization. So, um, values and ethics are expected to be interrelated with each other not conflicting okay uh, uh personal values are developed as the individual's response to social realities while ethics operates as she or he attempts to do his or her job or task within the social norms for a work group or a certain society now in spite of the rapid advancement of science and technology class the administrative problem remains to be social and cultural. The problem is not what to do, but how to do it. Okay? The responsibility of every public officer is clearly defined in his or her job description. So just like in, in, in um, uh, mga private officers, ma clearly defined yapon ang, ang responsibility sa job description the functions of his organization is shown in its charter the um when the employee encounters certain difficulties in making certain moral choices applicable to his or his situation so he must then consider the context of the social milieu in making his decisions Hence, ang personal values may come to gri grips with public ethics. Now, the, the general welfare and the preservation of the government necessitates the proper administration of public affairs. Thus, it is very much imperative that the government officers and employees, either elected or appointed, possess impeccable moral attributes. And and when the individual's personal values conflict with public ethics, which one prevails? Manay atong question, no? 
Um, that question is deceptively simple. It requires an understanding of the values and ethics of public responsibility. No? So, maaning atong module karon. Okay. Values versus ethics. Okay. So, ethics and values together lay the foundation of sustain sustainability. While they are sometimes used synonymously, um, they are different. Mm. Wherein ethics are the set of rules that govern the behavior of a person established by a group or, or a culture. Values, on the other hand, refers to the beliefs for which a person has an enduring preference. So, tani silang doha si values, si ethics and values are important in every aspect of life. When we have to make a choice between two things, no? Wherein ethics determine what is right, values determine what is important. Now, in the world of intense competition, every business entity or um, entity work on certain principles and beliefs, which are nothing but the values. So, likewise, ethics is implemented in the organization to ensure the protection of the interest of stakeholders like customers, suppliers, employees, society, and even the government. Okay, so we have here a comparison chart. No, so uh, in this chart we have three columns. No, we have basis for comparison, and then we compare on ethics or the values. So first row is meaning okay so um ethics refers to the guidelines for conduct that address question about morality okay when we talk of values it is defined as the principles and ideals that helps them in making judgment of what is more important okay now what are they ethics are system of moral principles Values is a stimuli for thinking. Okay. When we talk of consistency, si ethics, it should be uniform. No? Gisagkin sa pana si ja. Og mayon kag values, it differs from person to person. Depende na sa imong uh, upbringing or sa imong um background no then it tells what is morally correct or incorrect in a given situation so muna si ethics and sa values it tells us what we want to do or achieve um it ethics determines the extent of rightness and wrongness of our options si values determines the level of importance Ethics constrains while values motivates. Okay, so muna'y atong um, timanan between ethics and values. Now, let's proceed to definition of ethics. Okay, so by the term ethics, we mean a branch of moral philosophy. A sense of rightness or wrongness of actions, motives, and the result of these actions. So, in short, it is a discipline that identifies good or evil, no, just or unjust, fair or unfair practices, and about moral duty. It is well-based standards that a person should do concerning uh, rights, obligations, fairness, benefits to society, and so on. The standard puts a reasonable obligation to stop crime like stealing, assault, rape, murder, fraud, and so on. Uh, the system addresses the questions of human morality, okay? such as what should be a standard way for people to live. 
or what are the appropriate actions in a given situation no or what should be an ideal human conduct so etc um under ethics there are four important subject areas of study okay so we have meta ethics so this is a uh, ethical philosophy that analyzes the meaning and scope of moral values we have descriptive ethics it is a branch of ethics that deals with psychology sociology anthropology and etc we have norma normative ethics um, this is the study of the moral course of action through practical means and last is the applied ethics this branch tells us how we can achieve moral outcomes in a particular circumstance now let's proceed to values okay so values refer to the important and enduring belief beliefs or principles based on which an individual makes judgments in life it is at the center of our lives which act as a standard of behavior they severely affect the emotional state of mind as an individual they can be personal cultural values or corporate values now values class are forces that cause an individual to behave in a particular manner it sets our priority in life like what we considered in the what we consider in the first place okay so it's a it is a reason behind the choices we make it reflects what is more important for us so if we are true to our values and make our choices accordingly then the way we live to express our then then the way we live to express our core, core values that's the way to to uh express the way we live it expresses our core values if you understand an individual individual's values you can easily identify what is important for them okay I, again um um it refers to the important and enduring beliefs or principles of a certain individual okay okay so let's proceed to key differences between ethics and values now um the fundamental differences between ethics and values are, are described in the given point given uh points number one ethics refers to the guidelines for conduct that address question about morality value or values is defined as the principles and ideals which help them in making the judgment of what is more important now ethics is a system of moral principles in contrast to values which is the stimuli of our thinking another is values strongly influence the emotional state of mind and therefore it acts as a motivator on the other hand ethics compels to follow a particular course of action number four is ethics are consistent whereas values are different for different persons for example what is important for one person may not be important to another person no then we have values tells us what we want to do or achieve in life whereas ethics helps us in deciding what is morally correct or incorrect in a given situation ethics determines to what extent our options are right or wrong as opposed to values which defines our priorities in life now while ethics are consistently applied over the period and remains the same for all the human beings values have an individualistic approach 
Okay, so like for example, it varies from person to person, but remains stable. So stable, stable na siya ng values, but mo vary ra siya from person to person. Relatively unchanging, but they can be changed over time due to a significant emotional event. Okay, so you you take note of these key differences between ethics and values. Now, let's talk about values and public administration. Now, um, in improving public service, values become important factors. They are, again, the beliefs of central importance to which, um, to which an appropriate approbation or a moral or sentimental worth is attached they can be both barriers so values can be both barriers to development and prime factors in facilitating development now according to conrad f arrangeberg and arthur h nehoff members of a social group force group force one another to conform to a considerable extent to these values by rewarding those who follow them and imposing penalties on those who ignore them. Values tend to be conservative, that is, cultural changes in values will be resisted longer than those in technology or economics. Okay. Now, um... The values of public administration is the sum of the values of a pe of the people in a society it serves. Okay, so it changes as rapidly as do the people's values. The people's values change its reaction to development in society. But there is one area over which public administration has no control. Like when, um, when a society is divided, public administration will find it hard to establish its values and relate them to people's needs. So sometimes it requires a change of the bureaucratic structure itself. And oftentimes the problem is in the conser is, is it's conservative public officials who are wary in accepting new ideas for fear of destroying the status quo. Thus, um, they offer resistance to innovations. Another thing is the varying of standards used to measure them. So, naalagi tay standard pero lahi lahi ang gigamit para pag measure. No? Okay. Let's talk about administrative ethics. Now, as a concept, of course, ethics is not new. As a study of human conduct, ethics embraces the whole activity of man. Now, ethics is a way of life, and it is also society's view of what constitutes appropriate behavior by it, its public officials. It also sets the norms of conduct for public servants. Administrative ethics is important in public administration. Now, administrative ethics is important in public administration as it serves as guide in doing public functions which the law has not contemplated. Okay, ethics is not only legality. You have to take note of that class. No, it goes beyond legality. Ethics goes beyond legality. It helps public officials see more clearly the possibilities of human activity within the limits of political necessity. It also enables them to prove their control of their own departments and of themselves as individuals. Um, in the context of Philippine government, the highest standard Standards of ethics are embodied in Republic Act Number no. 6713 or the Code of Conduct and Ethical Standards of for Public Officials and Employees. Okay, so um, the 
eight norms of conduct of um, public officials and employees, which is found in Section 4A uh, in the said Republic Act. Okay. Uh, every public official and employee shall observe the following as standards of personal conduct in the discharge and execution of official duties. Number one is commitment to public interest. Now, always uphold the public interest over personal interest. Avoid wastage in public funds and revenues. Ensure that government resources and powers are employed, employed and used efficiently, effectively, honestly, and economically. Number two is professionalism. So perform and discharge duties with the highest interest, highest degree of excellence, professionalism, intelligence, and skill. Enter public service with utmost devotion and dedication to duty. Discourage wrong perception of your role as dispenser or peddler of undue patronage. Okay. Number three is justness and sincerity. Remain true to the people at all times. Act with justness and sincerity and do not discriminate against anyone, especially the poor and the underprivileged. Refrain from doing acts contrary to law, good morals, good customs, public policy, public order, public safety, and public interest. Do not dispense or extend undue favors on account of your office to your relatives, whether by consanguinity or affinity, except with respect to uh, appointments, uh, such relatives to positions considered strictly confidential or kanang members of your personal staff whose terms are coterminous with yours. So, maura unta na dapat diha ang pwede ka mo hire o koan kanin relative ni mo. No? Then, number four is public neutrality. So, provide service to anyone without unfair discrimination regardless of party af affiliation or preference. But, sad, sad ang atong reality because dili ni mauno. Kas, uh, wala ni siya na, I don't know ha, uh, peras maayo. But, unta ing ani, political neutrality. So, bisan pag unsa na siya, kisa na ijang gibutaran, no, or kinsa na ijang gi gi suportahan uh, dili dapat na maoy um page para ma hire ka or para mo hatag kag favor okay next is responsiveness to the public so extend prompt courteous and adequate service to the public unless otherwise provided by law or um is required by public interest you as a public official or employee shall provide information on your policies and procedures in clear and understandable language. Ensure openness of information, public consultations and hearings whenever appropriate. Uh, encourage suggestions. Simplify and systematize policy, rules and procedures. Avoid red tape and develop an understanding and appreciation of the socio-economic conditions which is the uh, which is prevailing in the country especially in the depressed um, rural and urban areas okay. then number six is nationalism and patriotism so always be loyal to the republic and to the filipino people promote the use of locally produced goods Mm. Guilty ta aning tanan kay ganahan ta og imported goods. Resources and technology and encourage appreciation and pride of country and people. Endeavor to maintain and defend Philippine sovereignty against foreign intrusion. Number seven is commitment to democracy. So commit yourself to the democratic way of life and values. Maintain the principle of public accountability and manifest by deeds the supremacy of civilian authority over the military. So always uphold the constitution and put loyalty to country above loyalty to persons or party. 
So, dapat dili ta loyal sa usara ka party, usara ka um, partido, or usara ka person. Dapat sa atong country ta loyal. The number eight is simple living. So, you and your family shall lead modest lives appropriate to your positions and income. Uh, do not divulge in extravagant display of wealth or uh, display of wealth in any form. So, kung unsa na dapat, ambot lang ha, um, kaning simple living. So, kung naaka sa uh, panggobyerno, dapat maorajun unta. Simple living, rajun unta ta. Uh, even ikaw nga public official or ang imong family. No, sa so appropriate dapat sa imong possession and income. Of course, kung dako kang income, then you do um, whatever your income can provide. But um, ang uban kay ano na kaning uh, lavish or extravagant na kaayo ang, ang pag-display sa ilang um, wealth mo na ang uban po is pa-question na. Okay, so these are the eight norms of conduct, no, which is found in Republic Act number sixty-seven thirteen, or the Code of Conduct and Ethical Standards for Public Officials and Employees. Okay, so question: What is the most important among all the norms stated in the R A? 6713 that a public official and employees employees shall possess so unsa ka sa inyong tanaw asa ka atong walo mm -hmm. so public officials and employees and their families shall lead modest lives appropriate to their positions and income this shall they shall not indulge in extravagant or ostentatious display of wealth in any form. So, norm number eight is the most important of among all the norms stated in num RA 67.13. Simple living. No? So, daghan ba kahay guilty ani during the pita? I don't know with you. And, uh, um, makitaan mo na nato sa atong mga public officials and employees. Okay. So, let's proceed to accountability. So, accountability, a matter of trust and confidence. What do we mean by public accountability? So, accountability has different meanings for different people. Okay. Um, Hyde believes, so can you see Jonathan, Jonathan David Hyde? He is an American social psychologist. You know, so a professor of ethical leadership at New York University. So um, he considered or he believed that accountability is um, fundamental at any time when people cooperate with other people they do not know. Accountability therefore can be seen to be as much about the relationship as it is about the responsibility or task. Ultimately, it is about ensuring that people are able to trust each other to do what is expected of them. Okay, so considering accountability from the perspective of the relationship means there can be different accountabilities between individuals or groups and in any in, in, in many different contexts. Okay, so accountability can also have um, many different objectives. So for example, one important accountability objective of health professionals is to ensure that their patients receive good medical treatment. No? So, na siya. so again, um, more vary na siya depending on its context. Okay? Accountability does not just exist, exist when, co when cooperation is needed. Okay? 
it can also involve personal responsibility. So, for example, associated with religion or other beliefs, no? personal development goals, or ethical and moral values. So, in short, accountability is the quality or state of being accountable, especially an obligation or willingness to accept responsibility or to account for one's action, actions, public officials lacking accountability. So, the definition of accountability is taking or being assigned responsibility for something that you have done or something you are supposed to do. So, an example of accountability is when an employee admits an error she made on like a certain task or a certain project. So, dili bitaw ka ng may ngon siya, ay, di man ako'y nagkuan na, di man ako, di man, di man ako'y assign na na, huwag ka nang mag point finger ba. So, um, dili mo, dili mo angkon o responsibility, no? Okay. Accountability is taking ownership of results. So, it is being responsible for results even if the task wasn't yours. So, bisang pag dili na imong task pero appeal sa, like naa ka sa certain group o niya ang kana, kana nga grupo ang nag, uh, naisayop. O niya, mo yung ka nga, ay, wako ana, kay wako ana pag decide nila or something like that. So, dili na dapat yung ana. Okay? Accountability makes organizations function smoothly and ensure there is no blame game being played. So again, if you are a, 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 a team leader or a, a team, um, uh, if you are in a team, dili ka pwede mo ingon nga. Sila naman ana, ma'am, or sila naman ana, sir, wakoy labot kay absent ko pag kuan ana, pag decide ana, and then uh, in, deny ka responsibility kay napalpa. Pero o um, Okay, gani kayo, bisag wa kaning wa kay appeal sa pag-decide or wa kaning trabaho sa kinahanglan trabaho on, mo ang kondayon o credit. No? So, dili dapat ing Okay. So, what is accountability in public governance? So, political accountability is when a politician makes choices on behalf of the people and the people have the ability to reward or sanction the politician. In representative democracies, citizens delegate power to elected officials through periodic elections in order to represent or act um, in their interest. So, bisang pag moingon kad, uh, okay, so, ang, ang simple way ani is, kanak nga mga, uh, kanak na ah, na lingkod ron sa pag -gobyerno. They are, they should be accountable to us, their constituents. No? Ang hitabo lahi. So, kitang mga tao, muratag manginking kung kinsa ang naa sa pang -gobyerno. That should not be the case. No? Kana dapat sila, they are accountable to us. No? Okay, meaning to say, ato mong gunang, uh, sa ato, ato mong gunang delegate ang ato power to them. Naman ang ato na silang gi-elect. Okay, so, uh, importante na nato na i-put in, in, in our mind nga um, kaning na sa mga pang no, whether public officials or public employees, they're actually accountable in anything that they do. So, muna siya. So accountability, the core idea. The central idea is when decision-making power is transferred from a principal, like for example, kita as, as citizens, to an agent, meaning a government, or example, a government. There must be a mechanism in place for holding the agent to account for their decisions and if necessary for imposing sanctions ultimately by removing the agent from power. So, mauna si Jadapal. Okay? So, tanawa ning code there. Accountability. It is not only what we do, but also what we do not do, for which we are accountable. So, 
bisan pag wala na nato gibuhat kana bitaw dapat buhato nato but wala nato gibuhat countable gihapon ta na diyan dapita there are four pillars of accountability number one is responsibility so a duty that binds to the course of action then we have number two answerability so being called to account three is trustworthiness so a trait of being worthy of trust and confidence and number four liability being legally bound to a debt or obligation how to make sense of government accountability okay so accountability is an elusive concept but understanding where it originates can help citizens find ways to hold governments accountable uh, in the narrowest sense, accountability is equated with answerability, the one I mentioned earlier. It refers to the obligation to give an account of one's action to particular individuals, groups, or organizations. However, in a world where public administrators increasingly operate in intergovernmental networks and global coalitions, deciphering what constitutes accountability in public management has become a challenging task. Okay, so one of the simplest ways to unravel the mystery of accountability for public administrators is to trace back to the root cost or uh, root sources and examine how it unfolds across varying levels to affect governmental decision making. So we will discuss here five key channels to look for the pressure points of accountability. Number one is political accountability. Okay. Political accountability class is arguably the strongest form of governance anchored in democratic principles. It is a means to exert political control or oversight. Appointed public officials are directly accountable to the executive branch with responsibilities in policy making, ranging from education to national defense to environmental protection. At the same time, they also possess a variety of authorities over rulemaking delegated from legislators. Now, these responsibilities dictate that public administrators should Ha, should account for their actions in the context of designing and implementing laws, rules, and regulations. Okay. The next is we have bureaucratic accountability. So, the stereotypical command and control relationship is in full force in bureaucratic accountability. Okay. Managers in public agencies need to focus their attention on the priorities of those at the top of the bureaucratic hierarchy. The functioning of a bureaucratic accountability system requires an organized and legitimate principal and agent relationship in which the act or the act to follow commands is unquestioned and a strict performance management system of standard operating procedures is well established. Now, in this approach, bureaucratic accountability is achieved by strategies, administrative rules, budget reviews, or performance management system. Okay. Okay. Then we have citizen accountability. So, citizen can hold government administrators accountable through participation, um, loss and deliberate forums. No, it is worth noting that um, in most countries, no, uh, in Western countries, the accountability pressures um, imposed upon public administrators by citizens are a rather indirect force because appointed officials do not undergo elections, which are a major source of accountability for elected uh, elected politicians and legislators. However, 
Myriad innovations, often scaled by information and communication technologies, are being devised to empower citizens' ability to directly access bureaucratic information. So, monitor government activities and supply real-time feedback on public service delivery. So, these demand, uh, these demand side tools are um, undoubtedly instigating an evolution on public accountability. Then we have legal, legal accountability. So, legal accountability is based on relationships between members of a government agency and lawmakers outside it. So, um, lawmakers can impose legal sanctions or formal contractual arrangements. It should be highlighted that this relationship is different from superior, supervisor and subordinate arra arrangement and bureaucratic accountability, So, which is in essence hier hierarchical. So in legal, um, in legal accountability, the two parties are autonomous and it involves a judicial agreement between legislators and public managers. Okay, so you take note of that. Then we have professional um, accountability. So professional accountability has become a novel way to instill discipline into government activities. So it occurs when public officials rely on skilled employees and experts to provide appropriate solutions um, for technical, techni technically difficult and complex problems. So Authority can be enforced through performance standards, code of ethics, or licensure in governments. No, so mo nang atung na atay sa PRC or um sa panadiha ng mga um regulation uh agencies no sa government. Technical specialists in public agencies such as medical or legal staff may be subject to investigations or sanctions from review boards or disciplinary committees in their profession. So, professional accountability can be escalated when public administrators are more exposed to internationally recognized professional standards. Okay. Lastly, uh, in our interconnected world, Public administrators usually face multiple channels of internal and external accountability pressures uh, and different accountability streams often conflict with one another. So in practice, the codified laws or administrative procedures may sometimes run contrary to what professional judgment or ethical values entail. So, to effectively hold governments to account, an integral perspective is crucial to sort through the clashing dynamics of various accountability mechanisms. Okay, so that is accountability class. So that ends our discussion um, for this module, ethics and accountability in the government. So. Um, I will be uploading this to our Moodle and then you will have a task, you know, a reinforce, reinforcement task after um, you view this video. So you have to read Republic Act number 6713, so Ang Tibuok Republic Act, and then you have to answer the following questions. Okay, so number one, how important is the public, Republic Act 6713? What do you think is the common violation under RA 6713? Who is covered by RA 6713? Uh, are government employees allowed to accept gifts? So you have to explain your answers. And what is the difference between ethics and accountability? So you will be given time to answer this, of course. And you can answer that these questions after you read Republic Act 6713 for you to be able to understand no, sa code of conduct sa public officials and public employees. Okay, so that's all for this module class and I hope you learned something from our or from my discussion. Okay, so thank you and God bless you.